This is your host of Libhartia and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk. And today we have with us Nora Jones, founder and CEO of Jelly. Nora, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Yeah, before we talk about, uh, you know, some announcement that you folks, I, I would love to know a bit about the company itself because uh, you used to work at Netflix and Slack before you created the company. So talk about what you saw either at Slack or Netflix or in the market in general that you felt like, hey, you needed to create something. So talk a bit about Jelly. What do you folks do? Yeah, so Jelly is an incident management platform. Um, we cover the incident from when you uh, figure out there is an incident uh, to completing your post-incident review afterwards. Um, so it was inspired a lot by my time uh, in SRE roles at Slack, at Netflix, uh, at startups like Jet.com, all companies that were scaling incredibly quickly, had a lot of users, um, a lot of different things going on. And what I was disappointed by when I was working at those companies was the lack of tools available on the market. There's so much in how we talk to each other during incidents and how we coordinate during incidents that is just not being analyzed um, because of lack of tooling today and lack of proper tooling to deal with it. Um, most of the time after an incident, you're just trying to clean it up and then you're moving on to the next thing. And there is a lot of room to get more investment, uh, more uh, ROI out of that investment that you made. And so we are really here to help you get all that data and also understand that you are busy. But um, the data that you can get from incidents using Jelly can help uh, influence cultural change. It can help create a more psychologically safe workspace. It can help understand which projects um, can be worked on differently. It can understand where you might need more headcount, where you might need less headcount. Um, how to prioritize things a little bit better. And it's, so it's really a tool about helping your org understand themselves better. I want your definition of incident response. And then we are, I would also like to know what is the scope of Jelly? So how I would define incident response in the industry is um, figuring out there is an incident. So Jelly, we have an incident response bot that allows you to select stages of your incident. So you know, when I think of stages of an incident, I think of, we really think of three different things. One, you're kind of trying to figure out if it is an incident. You know something is wrong, something's not the way it's supposed to be, but maybe you don't want to wake up your colleagues yet. Maybe you don't want to pull people away from their days. And so we have in our bot a state for that, right? That's when you're identifying that there is an incident, but you're still letting people know, right? So, hey, I am just letting folks know I'm not sounding the alarm yet, but something's weird. Then you are in a phase where you're like, I do know something is weird. We should call an incident. I'm in the diagnosing phase. And then after that, you're repairing it. Um, you eventually get to a mitigation phase. So we handle all of that, but we also handle the fact that those states are very different from each other. And they're also equally important. I've been at organizations where someone will be fumbling about in the Slack channel and at like two in the morning, afraid to declare an incident, but they're posting everything that they're doing by themselves. And really it ends up adding more time to the incident that they're not involved in rolling their coworkers sooner. Um, so that's how I would define incident response um, overall. A lot of folks use Slack for it in the industry. A lot of folks use Zoom for it in the industry. Um, before we all went fully remote, sometimes people would just sit in a conference room together. Um, but yeah, now that is kind of really taken online. And a lot of the time people are using Slack for it, which frankly is the best tool for the job right now, but it's also a tool that is not built for incident response, right? And so uh, Zoom and Slack are very much used for incident response in the industry. However, they're not built for it. And so we're trying to like, as an industry, we're trying to tack on all these things that are just not meant for this particular tool. And so we don't um, necessarily like believe that you have to use a certain tool for the job, but we are trying to keep that in mind. Like a coordinator's job is very heavy. Um, they're coordinating a lot. They're trying to keep track of everything. At the same time, they're trying to fix the incident. And so we are keeping that in mind with all of our tooling. You have been talking about tools a lot. What kind of tools you folks have, you know, 
for, for organizations? We have a free incident response bot that we just announced a couple weeks ago. Uh, so it has all of those states that I mentioned. Um, you can use it within Slack. It's meant to help you bring the right folks into the room. Um, but our real bread and butter is our incident analysis platform. Um, so our incident analysis platform helps you find out the stories behind your incidents. Uh, it helps you uncover all the ways um, which things were messy and hard for people. And by uncovering those and unearthing those, you can make things easier for people in the future, not just in incidents, but in anything. And so we do that by hooking into Slack, Zoom, PagerDuty, Workday, a number of other integrations to really aggregate all those things together and show you here were the humans that coordinated in the incident, here's what was hard, here's when you needed them, here's how you needed them, and here's how they work together. And this is built for those humans. We don't charge per user. We want everyone to have access to the platform so that everyone can learn at the same time and not really single each other out, but learn how to work together better together. If you look at both of these tools, uh, I mean, the market for in incident response is kind of, I mean, the whole cloud native market is crowded either way. So there are a lot of other tools also. So what I also want to know, if you look at your experience with Slack and then Netflix, then you felt that, hey, those tools are not adequate enough that you, you, you felt the need to bring this incident analysis tool and then also the bot tool. What I was really experiencing was I felt that the tools on the market were trying to sell me um, and they weren't tools like AWS or anything. They were, they were startups at the time and they were trying to sell me kind of a process uh, without actually fully understanding what I as an SRE was going through in these incidents or what my organization was going through. It was like a, here, this is the way, this is how you should do it. And they were selling me a process, which I understand after big moments in organizations, being sold a process can feel really good. It can feel like a fix, but without taking the time to fully understand things yourselves and why you're applying that process, you're just gonna end up with the same issues over and over again. And so I wanted to build, I wanted a product that existed that could help me make sense of things and could help my coworkers make sense of things. Um, SREs are really folks that are just great at understanding relationships. They're great at understanding the relationships between services and technologies, between people in their orgs, between people in those technologies. And I wanted a way for those things to get surfaced to really escalate the SRE's um, impact in the org too. As you're also saying, you know, that you don't want to create more tools, but there should be appropriate tools for appropriate things. So, so can you also talk about when you look at the whole, and I mean, once again, uh, incident response is one is small, uh, like, we can break down the problem, but the larger problem is, you know, once again, reliability of the whole. So where does incident response fit into the larger picture of, you know, business continuity? How people should have an incident response strategy in place, just the way they have a lot of other things which are core of their, you know, business. It's paramount, right? I'm, I'm talking to, uh, I have a friend that works at a company right now that is about to have a a really large product launch and they don't have a product in the market yet, but they are preparing for things to potentially go sideways. And by preparing for things to potentially go sideways, you actually learn a lot about what is going to go sideways, right? Sometimes like it, even just having those conversations helps you. Um, I mean, I think companies that aren't doing that are just setting themselves up for failure, but it, it also depends on where your company is at. If you are a pre-product market fit company that has two customers, customers experiences everything. And you might not think that, you know, uh, creating an incident plan is a big deal, but it is, right? Because your customers, because you only have a few of them are going to be watching you more than ever. And so you want to provide that really great experience from day one. The depth that you go on it, I think depends on where you are as an organization, but I see Far too many companies wait until they have a bad thing happen, wait until they hit the news, and then they just want something to fix it. Um, you'll see job descriptions go up at, at big companies after large incidents. You might see people get let go because the company is just looking, they're grappling on for something. But if they have had a solid plan, they know that that plan can go wrong and they know how people play a part in that plan. And so I just, I do think it's, it's paramount. What I also want to talk about the relationship between uh, the the bot 
and the analysis tool. So if you can also talk a bit about the workflow and know why you felt that, hey, this is the time to introduce the bot also so that it will help the teams better. I mean, ultimately you are just going to need to be coordinating in the moment. And I, it was, it was kind of bothering me how some of these bots were being built in the market because they were going too in depth for what people need when they're in the midst of an emergency. When you're in the midst of an emergency, you don't need a display with a thousand different buttons. And, you know, I want to like quickly share a story from another industry. A friend of mine is a helicopter flight paramedic and um, she got into her helicopter one day and all the software had updated. And all the update was meant to make things easier for her, but she didn't actually know how to do it and it had all these bells and whistles that she didn't need when she was just trying to support the patient and ended up having to call someone on the ground that knew how the software update was working. And I think of that a lot in the midst of our incidents too. I'm seeing so many bots on the market that just have way too much setup work and way too much process automation work that is actually not helping you in the moment. And so I want, we wanted to create something different. We wanted to create something that was geared towards helping the person. And our bot is completely free because I genuinely believe this should be a commodity and table stakes. And when you are charging for something like this, that's when you end up adding all those components that you don't actually need in an incident. Um, and so our bot is, you know, we, we help you broadcast out to people that an incident's occurring. We help you set the state. We help you bring the right people in and we help you communicate throughout the course of the incident in a way that's really easy. Um, at the end of that incident, as soon as you change the state, it gets ingested into uh, the Jelly Analysis platform. And so that's how those two uh, really connect today. But if you're not using our bot, using the analysis platform, it just, it makes the analysis platform easier for you if you are using the bot because you'll have all the incidents already in there and you can start seeing trends, you can start seeing patterns uh, and you can start dealing with all of that uh, rather than kind of individually ingesting them. Can you share, of course, there may be a lot of names that you cannot share, but if you can share uh, some use cases, some users which are leveraging jellies, you know, these two technologies. We have customers using us for all kinds of different things. That, and that's the beauty of it. We had one customer, um, Unity, that ingested every incident that they had in a particular quarter into a single investigation in Jelly so that they could see how much a particular technology was used, so that they could see how much individual people were using that particular technology um, to really gain some space on their roadmap for the next quarter uh, around that particular technology. That was one use case I saw. Um, another use case was from a customer of ours, Zero. Um, they really like our um, aggregation feature. So in the Jelly Analysis platform, we do account for the fact that you probably just weren't talking about this incident in one place. You were probably talking about it in a lot of different places. And that can be hard for folks. And so we take all the places you were talking about it and put it in one display nicely at the end of your incident to really help you understand the coordination costs of your incident. So those are two use cases I found to be really great for the product. Um, we also have customers that really like our narrative builder feature. So our narrative builder is there to make building a timeline easy and fast and understand you're busy, but also really enhance the quality of the output of that timeline in a way that's useful for your coworkers, useful for you. How mature is the market for incident response? Uh, do you feel that you are at a stage where folks are actually looking at solutions, tools for incident response to tame it, or you feel that we are still at a stage where a lot of education is needed? Every piece of the market is going to need some sort of education in order to evolve. And I do feel like the market is ready for incident tooling. Um, we, we're not having to educate around the fact that people have incidents and they need to get better at them. It's just on approach. I think is where we will see our industry evolve a lot over time. Um, but no, I, you know, we, we are getting approached and, you know, people see the need for, for what we're building. Um, and it's great to watch them get use out of it the same day they, they install it. Nora, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, share your own journey and also the story of Jelly. And I would love to have you back on the show because I, I can clearly see that there are a lot of things in the pipeline. So thank you and um, I look forward to our next discussion.
Yeah, thank you so much. It was great to be here and I'd love to come back anytime.